All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Maddie here from Chill TCG. Uh, we're in the Grand Finals match, Chill Series number 28. Um, 520 players. Uh, all comes down to this one Grand Finals match. We have Joshua Sutherland playing Luke Metal versus Stefan Ivanov playing Rapid Strike Urshvu VMAX. We're streaming live for over 100 uh, people right now on Zach Lasage's YouTube channel. And uh, and uh, he is here, of course, uh, to cast with me. What's going on, Zach? Yo, what's poppin'? How's it going, everyone? So um, as Maddie's doing it for everyone to watch, as it was recorded, or I guess pre-recorded, or however I should put it, and we're watching it here live, so if there's any discrepancies on us giving a shout-out to someone or anything like that, or <laughs> anything going on like that, it's just because we are live, so feel free to check out the channel at Zach Lesage PTCG. Uh, I frequently collaborate with Maddie, uh, really good friends, especially like on our podcast, The Yellhorn. Um, I mean, I think this matchup's going to be, uh, I'd say interesting, but I'm not sure. I think anyone going into it would say that it's instantly in josh's favor yeah i mean personally right off the bat that's kind of what i'm feeling as well um i do think that with the malalanas and the fact that urshfu does kind of like to chip away for 150 120 um you know just kind of that play style uh, is something that luke metal kind of is okay with right with the malalanas the cynthia caitlin's as well as the damage reduction uh, i do think that lucario metal has uh, an advantageous uh, matchup right well, Against... even the fact that it can't even attack the Zamazenta. Oh, is that's true. Yeah, the Zamazenta uh, like, as well. I, yeah. I think if Josh just goes with a thick Zamazenta here, uh, it, it really forces Stefan to deal with Rabbit Strike Urshifu um, as a V before it turns into a V Max. Yep. And uh, it's another thing, too. I mean, Luke Metal doesn't even play Crobats or Dedenes, right? Or at least he shouldn't. Uh, Josh doesn't. So that's going to be another thing where Urshifu does struggle to kind of boss things up and take some prize cards. Right up the gate, we see uh, Zamazenta here with Toughness Cape. He's going to capture energy, put the Zacian down, uh, and uh, grab that Luke Metal, put it down as well. And he's going to put the goggles on Luke Metal, and he's going to trip its Zord for three. doesn't grab any energies, but you know what? Uh, Josh is probably pretty fine with that. He's all settled for the uh, the long game. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think there, there's a couple factors here, too. And, I mean, Josh is in a, an Eastern time zone. So, I mean, he's been playing this event since 6 o'clock. Um, so, going on for nine hours round at this point. Mm. Um, Stefan, Stefan's from France. Uh, so, European <laughs> time zone. So, Stefan's like, yep, let's start uh, the tournaments at midnight. So, I don't know if anyone's ever played in those, like, uh, coffee cup tournaments. I know Maddie and I have had a couple, like, late late night, four yeah, night I, sessions. I top four a few times. Him, so, I mean, yeah, I mean... Uh, no big deal. I, I've never joined for a. I've never played eighteen rounds, <laughs> starting at three o'clock in the morning or like twelve o'clock at night. So it's kind of crazy. Definitely think, some, uh, yeah, definitely some dedicated players, which uh, obviously means a lot to us. Um, and like I said, five hundred and twenty people came out uh, this week for this special chill series event uh, that uh, Zach and I, you know, had the privilege of of running and and supplying the prize pool for, um, and of course live streaming. So. You know, it's it's awesome. It's crazy to me, though, Zach, that people do come out, even with the crazy time zones and the long tournaments, uh, that they're still dedicated in playing in Chill Series events. It means a lot. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm, I'm super happy with everyone showing up here and even, like, the amount of viewers that we have at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning. I know there's different time zones and, like, we got all the people from Asia and Europe watching right now. Um, and, I mean, the dedicated people from the Eastern time zone who are, like gonna gonna have a really terrible thursday gonna need an extra <laughs> shot a shot of espresso in that coffee but um we'll As see well. exactly how this matchup goes like right now i'm just uh messaging some of my friends seeing exactly what their thoughts on the whole matchup is maybe they play the matchup a little bit more because to my understanding i think zamazenta is just gonna really i, I think zamazenta is really gonna be the bane of existence here yeah i mean i think zamazenta is such a good card and it's a card that gets much better even after rotation as well. I think that Zamazenta is extremely useful in Luke Metal, but you gotta feel like this card only gets better with time, especially when rotation happens in September and Tag Team and GX Pokemon rotate as well. Uh, kind of gonna be very meta-defining. Uh, but for right now, in this matchup, almost the most important card that uh, you know one could be playing. Um, but we see the boss come out, so we could just see maybe a nice little you know attack here, a little Gale Thrust into the Luke Metal. Um, but uh, whiffs the switch or decides not to, and we're going to go ahead and see a pass here. And Josh, he's going to just feel free to go and back into this Luke Metal with the switch, attach an energy to the Zacian, put that doll down, KO the Dedene for two prize cards, and he's sitting pretty uh, in the active spot with his 280 HP uh, Zamazenta V. So <laughs> definitely tricky if you're if you're Stefan right now. Yeah, and we're just cutting from the chat here. Uh, Santiago Garcia, uh, shout out to Peru Pokemon Circuits. Shout out to Peru. Uh, Peruvian food is some of my favorite f 
food in the world. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I've never had a chance to go to Peru, but I've uh, I've gone to South America plenty of times, uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, and stuff like that. Uh, so cool place, love South America for sure. I mean, Peru. Are we gonna have... Ooh, oh, Marty no Phoebe. Sorry, okay. I just um, want to double check to make sure there's no Phoebe. Uh, Peru, phenomenal Pokemon players as well. Uh, Angel Aranbar was somebody who did make top cut. I believe they are from Peru as well. Uh, just a lot of great Peruvian players that seem to just, uh, you know, always seem to do pretty well at Chill Series events. So big shout out to Peru. But uh, for right South now... South America, became, like if there's any like continent that I think is very good at online events, definitely say South America. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's just a lot of great players from South America that uh, te- you know probably didn't get too much of a shine uh you know up until sort of this online circuit uh we see st- we see stefan here he goes for the g max rapid flow just hitting the two guys on the bench uh gonna be your best decision right because you can't actually just attack the zamazenta uh but discarding the energies in the process and we see him attached to the luke metal so a jx attack could be coming next turn but for right now we're gonna go ahead and just assault tackle right into this big three prize uh, yeah i think it, it's one of those things where josh has his setup for the luke metal to discard the energies off from the urshifu um, if it does not evolve, and I mean, I think it's one of those things where Stefan's pretty trapped. I mean, I don't know if they're going to put on a show because they are streamed in the finals and they yeah. know that Maddie is recording the video. <laughs> like, maybe maybe they will. I mean, for me, I, like, I'd probably value sleep. I'd, be, I, I'd flip over my GX and go big sleep GX. Yeah, uh, I hear that. Be like, I don't care about the slow. So it, so it should be noted here, Stefan does not play BB. Um, the two techs that I was thinking of, Stefan plays Cheryl and Team Yelgrens. I, I, I mean, Cheryl could see some value in here uh, because Josh is not really going for those big knockouts. Team, team Yelgrunt might be able to slow down Josh a little bit. Mm. But yeah. recently, I, just, I, I just think that... Um, it's an interesting tech. In, in Josh Russia is just going to take away as many energies, take away opportunities, yep. try to go for advantageous knockouts with Zacian. And I think Josh chose the three perfect Pokemon and is probably not going to bench anything else unless, of course, we see another Zamazenta V. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. I, I think that... Um, you know, Stefan making the right play, right? You kind of have to go into the Urshifu V, hit for the 150 on the on the Zamazenta. Probably the correct play, uh, but again, not at the best option, even considering that now you just get GX attacked. I think you have four or five energies in your discard pile, and uh, Mallow Liners are still primed and ready in Josh's deck to just find them and draw into them. The escape rope comes out, but that doll is there, luckily, and uh, Josh is just going to be able to go into the doll here. And Stefan, again, in a pretty bad position. I think that, um, I think that the Zamazenta is huge, but at the same time, Right, I, mean, I think this game is really just dictated by Zamazenta yeah. and stopping anything else. And I mean, we we can make banter about anything else that's going on in this game. I don't think Stefan is going to like. I I don't think Josh is going to let anything else get knocked, like bring anything else down. Like, yeah, Stefan can draw those five prize cards between the Lucario, Mel Metal GX, and the Zacian on the bench. I don't think Josh really cares. I think he's like, I got a Zam, homie. No, a hundred percent. I think that Zam is like your anchor right in this matchup. Um, and we see Josh just attacking with the Luke medal because, you know, of course, we, in two cards hands in, in, in Stefan here, he would have to double switch out and even KO this. Uh, and, and he's not even KOing this Luke medal, right? Because he's only doing 90 damage, uh, which is really important, um, as well as kind of having that full energization primed up, putting on the pressure. Um, we are going to see the Marnie come out um, from Stefan here and he attaches to the Arshfu V, but it's just going to be an uphill battle the whole way. And, um, you know, this is sort of why I think a lot of people were running Phoebe and Urshifu, because it does struggle with Luke Metal, and I think that Phoebe can help, for sure. It all depends if you play the Mewtwo or not. Like, I know a lot of the modern lists, uh, such as Rahul's, who was in the Chill Finals, I think, last week with Rapid Strike Urshifu. Um, it, it's one of those things, I don't think he played the Mewtwo. I think a lot of lists are cutting out Mewtwo. Stefan is still playing the Mewtwo because of some of those one-up techs. Mm. So it's really one of those things, like... Is it going to matter? But we're going to see Stefan take a prize card here with Gale Thrust, or three prize cards, that is. Oh, it is doing enough. All right, I don't know how to do math. Yeah, yeah, it's, I apologize. There's, there's enough on there. I mean, it's it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, man. Math <laughs> does not necessarily have to be our strong points. But there's Josh going to be taking uh, three prize cards there. It's something. Um, I mean, it's something, right? You got to think that Stefan, he's making the effort. Uh, this Amazenta does have some damage counters onto it. And potentially, um, well, I mean, it's... it's it, it's tricky for sure. Um, I think you definitely want to. I think as long as Stefan does not play, like basically right now, Josh has the game completely locked up from a checkmate board, regardless of Zamazenta, as long as Stefan does not play um, his Marnie. There's no reset stamp. He has to basically play one of his three Marnies. Yeah. And because I... Josh can go Mallow, Lana, and knock out that, uh, right. that Zamazenta. And I think it's another so thing, too. Knock out that uh, Rapid Strikers. 
right and, and if and if you do KO the Zamazenta with uh you know with the the rapid striker of V, you got the Zacian to come in and KO it uh so kind of is kind of one of those soft lock situations uh you know down two Marnies Stefan is uh, the Jirachi Stellar Wish just came out but you know again uh, uphill battle uh, the odds are not in Stefan's favor and I think that Josh has played this matchup pretty properly probably has a lot of experience I would say uh, playing Luke Metal uh, religiously since Battle Styles came out has probably fought in a few rapid striker shifus uh, in the past month or so so I think you know making all the right decisions we see the calm come out uh, you know getting rid of that mimic you not necessarily useful in this matchup at all and uh, I didn't see what he grabbed there but um, puts the energy on and we see the dojo could be yeah, huge I though I mean is the dojo doing enough so you're doing 190 190 uh, minus 60 is 130 so that is enough okay it's interesting for sure um you know you can ko the zacian and potentially have a chance but we have the malalon in hand without any hand disruption uh definitely not going to be very likely but the the denny comes out zach so if we see marnie switch stefan's back in the game i i honestly don't see it i think josh just sends up his samus and like cool I have a Pokemon with 30 on it. I'm going to remove your Rapid Strike energy, hit you for 130, word. Well, or I'm just going to attach a Metal Energy and boss up a Jirachi. Either well, or. I mean, if the Marnie came out, though. Right there. Like, if you had the Marnie... Like, has game in hand right now, yes. as I'm looking at it. Yeah, this is game. But, I mean, if, if we did see the Marnie from Stefan, and he kind of, you know, disrupted, you know, Josh's hand, got rid of the, the, the Malalan as the bosses, and then he could have had a chance. But, didn't happen. So, there it goes. That's going to be game number one. Uh, swiftly going to Josh. Stefan did put up a good effort, took five prize cards, but, um, you know, I think both players played it very appropriately, played it very well, um, but I think that uh, the lack of Phoebe in Stefan's list is going to come back to haunt him here in the grand finals match and potentially could be uh, a key reason. <laughs> did you see Josh's lists, Zach? Josh's lists? Look at He's got one deck. That's all he needs. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess it's it works for him. Wow. Uh, going into game two here, though, going into game two here, here, uh, I'm pretty excited. I'm just, I'm pretty excited to uh, see how it unfolds. Now, you know, I'm not saying it's impossible for Stefan to win, right? It's just not a great scenario. And another start with Zamazenta is going to be phenomenal, as well as the tack hall switch and energy in hand. Uh, all great things that you like to see if you're starting off this game. Uh, you know, if you're Josh starting off this game, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. Starting with Zam is really just the best thing you ever could ask for in this matchup. And as long as you're able to get it set up and see something else. So we got a question. Uh, Mariano, uh, is this live? Can't the opponent watch this and see his hands? Well, Stefan is one of the most utmost respected players in the game. And there is a slight delay when it comes to the stream. So not really any advantage. So, I mean, technically in a world, Stefan could turn over to the stream. But we are watching our viewers. Yep, we're able to see who's watching <laughs> first and foremost. And, and uh, I don't think I think Stefan he's trying to keep his eyes open in his own game. Yeah, because it is uh, currently like nine o'clock in the morning for him. Um, I think he's maybe Uber eating some breakfast or something like that. Yeah, he's ready uh, to eat breakfast right now. That's what he's ready to do. You know, after yeah. this game, he's gonna he's gonna you know stretch his legs and uh, get one of those crepes or whatever French people eat for breakfast, and he's gonna go go about his day. You know, getting second out of two hundred or five hundred and twenty players, uh, but. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. The two energies yeah. immediately on the Luke metal here, Zach. And he's mm -hmm. going to switch right into it. An Intrepid Sword. I don't know if I like the switch there, uh, to be honest. Maybe the, maybe it just gets for the boss's orders, but it's, I don't know. It is interesting. It's, it, it's interesting. I mean, I think Josh is a combination of knowing what he's doing with Luke metal. And anytime it seems like he makes a mistake, he is not punished by it. His deck seems to just work for him in ways that we might not even understand. Yeah, it looks like, um, you know, Josh might have, you know, slid some money to TPCI to kind of affect the programming uh, for his account specifically, um, which, uh, you know, I guess guess works out for him. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Josh, uh, in, in previous games, which, of course, we aren't recording for the YouTube, but if you were watching the live stream, especially against that Green's Dragapult, Josh was drawing like an absolute mad lad. It was phenomenal. I've never seen anyone draw like that, especially in a top eight uh, match, in, in a matchup like that. It was just super crazy to watch. Um, but um, Stefan here, I mean, we've got uh, the VMAX out here in, in kicking. He's got the rapid energy onto it. Um, and uh, potentially we could see some damage come off, right? We could see 
a rapid flow. We could just see, you know, a gale thrust into the Luke metal for the 120 damage. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I think maybe just going ahead and rapid, fl rapid flowing the two bench Pokemon, although you can't hit Zamazenta, so that's, I guess, not too viable. Um, but we'll see what he decides to do here. Uh, the Zigzagoon is pretty interesting. I mean, the Zigzagoon, uh, hopefully Stefan does not put it on the active, because <laughs> the Metal Rocks would certainly prevent that. Yeah, uh, Stefan knows better. Yeah, he definitely knows better, even even being a little bit sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I would definitely agree here. He, he's gonna go ahead and attach to the Urshifu V here, and just go ahead ops for the Gale Thrust. Solid 120 on the Luke Metal, uh, but of course the tag call in Josh's hand. He's like, "Hey, Malolana, what's up?" Like, you know, we're just gonna go yeah, in. Exactly. Always healing, always doing some kind of shenanigans here, and yeah, you can just go back into it and GX attack if he really wants to. I, I mean, I don't think he even wants to GX attack. I think. Um, well, he is. Maybe. Oh, I, he might go for GX attack. He might oh, also he might. just go for Gale Fist. True. Um, I think okay, the GX is... That. I mean, that, so one thing that he did differently about this game compared to last game is he GX the Rapid Strike Urshifu V. Um, so the fact that he's going against the V Max, something that I don't necessarily think is a threat, mm. might mean that his Rapid Strike Urshifu V might be able to attack into that uh, Zamazenta. Right. A exactly. Um, and it's... Um, you know, these are decisions that uh, you typically... You know, kind of make in the, in the in, you know, right in the swing of the game. Uh, as we just saw in game one, uh, Stefan may be trying to take a, a different approach, uh, which I think is probably a smart decision. Um, you know, but... This game did not win. Like, one thing that you should notice is, like, right. a top player, they will change up their approach if they did lose a game, or they're either going to go for something because they lost a game specific, for a specific reason, right? Right, exactly. If you're going to do the same thing every single game, and you're coming to the same result every single game, it's probably going to be the same result every single time. So Stefan's going for more of a unique win condition. Right. And I, and I think that that's fair. You know, I mean, I think when a matchup like this, when you're unfavored, you kind of have to think outside the box uh, and you really kind of have to try some things that are perhaps not the, the standard. Exactly. I, I don't disagree with that. Uh, take it all, but we're probably going to see another Gale thrust. You're plugging in for, uh, what is it? 150 minus 60 now, mm. which is 90 damage. Well, oh, okay. well, so we're going to see uh, this doing 120. 120 yeah. So putting it in a two-shot range. Could be pretty clutch. I mean, only Cynthia and Caitlyn in Josh's hand. He's going to be able to, of course, okay, he's going to be able to discard the Cynthia Caitlyn, uh, grab probably a Malolana um, from the discard, and draw three cards, uh, depending on what he draws in here. Okay, so it's just another quick ball. Uh, this Zacian, probably getting KO'd this turn, um, and chooses not to attach to the Zacian, that metal energy. Probably a smart move. And Stefan here, he's going to take some early prize cards. I mean, I think it's not too bad. I know he's got multiple uh, Urshifu Vs in his deck, so, you know, never too late. I think that his best decision might be to just keep up these sort of single attachments and these Gale Thrusts early game with the Urshifu V Max, and then perhaps late game, uh, if it comes down to it, start setting up his Urshifu Vs, all right? I don't think you want to put two energies on an Urshifu V and potentially, you know, you know, get have that Urshifu V get knocked out, right? So I think that you target the Zacian, uh, with these Archive of V-Maxes right off the bat. I think that's smart. Exactly. And then I think you go in with the Vs a little bit later. Uh, so I think Stefan definitely knows uh, his best course of action. Although he has to be very careful too, because at this point he only has two Pokemon that can really attack into the Zamazenta at this point, right? He plays a 4-3 line. Um, two of them are already evolved. Can't unevolve a Pokemon in his deck. So I think... Right. No, I agree. I, there's the one rapid strike urshan play that can do some damage and there's prize card uh prize card number one and two for stefan yeah and i think you know if you play it smart right two urshifu v's you know with set up with three energies uh for those second attacks can take out the zamazenta barring no malamana comes out and i think that's your really your best win condition right i think you use the v maxes you know you take your your first th you know five prize cards and then you kind of hope that those last two urshifu v's in your remainder uh, energies is going to be enough to, um, you know, to close out the, the game here. But those Malalanas, man, they're they're tough. And I think if you're Josh, you know, you're in a position where maybe you don't want to burn those Malalanas on your Luke Metal. Um, and we actually see a, a, a Zacian get benched here, uh, Zach, by Josh. Yeah, I don't, know I, I don't know if I like that play. I I think it's it's really risky because now you're kind of allowing Stefan to bypass the Zamazenta entirely to take his six prize cards to win the game. 
and um, that we. Might a, that might be a three o'clock in the morning play. <laughs> he could... Either that or, or he's looking at it and be like, maybe he won't be able to dock at this Pokemon. Maybe he's gone through some resources. Certain, he certainly discards some other stuff. Yeah, I mean, there goes the other VMAX. So again, probably committing to that idea of uh, of not evolving the third one, which is smart. We see the Mute uh, Mewtwo come out, so potentially grabbing the. Okay, so he grabs the Marnie. I, I, I think it's an interesting play. I think I think the hand disruption is going to be very good. Um, and I think that we're just going to Gale Thrust the doll here. Um, and um, it, so the map, I, I don't, it's it's interesting. Yeah, it's it's. it's yeah, there's a lot of plays that I, I'm, I'm just not entirely sure of. I mean. The double metal off this Intrepid Sword is pretty big though. It's not bad at all. So now I know Marty is in Stefan's hand now right so we could potentially uh go into the urshifu v i think it's one of those things where i don't i don't think Stefan can win this game at this point i think it's very unlikely i i do like, agree whoever has to attack that zamazen it's gonna be one of those things where you, as much as there's a luke metal and the Zacian, maybe josh's idea is for him to kind of go through the resources try to isolate those pokemon yeah, and I think having a Zacian on the board is important for Josh because when he goes into that Urshifu V and attacks the Zamazenta, you want to be able to just go in and then KO it, right? You don't want it to survive two turns. Um, but this Marty could be huge. Uh, the tag calls in there, though, unfortunately, uh, for Stefan. Um, but uh, I think Stefan's play was to, you know, Marty attack the Zamazenta for 150, hope that he doesn't have a way to heal or switch into the Zacian um, or, you know, attack with the Zacian next turn and, you know, really kind of rely on that. Um, but unfortunately, you know, Josh does have tackle in hand, so it's, I, yeah, I think it's going to be going into, uh, whatever rapid strikes a long name of an attack is. It's too many words for me to read at this late at night. Yeah. I, it's going to hit the Zamazenta for, I think it's a one, thousand, one sixty thousand, a hundred years. Okay. Sure. I mean, that is pretty rapid if you're hitting a hundred times, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, 100, hit 100 times to do 160 uh, damage. It's 1.6 damage per per hit. You know what I mean? Or yeah, so yeah, yeah. not great, but I mean, <laughs> rap, rapid strike. So we're gonna see uh, the Malolana heal all that damage off. Yeah, and we're gonna heal. The cape of toughness go away. And a KO with the Zacian. I think that this I seals the deal. I think. This... I mean, I think Josh. Like, it's not even about Josh trying to draw the prize cards i think josh can just play defensively at this point yeah and i mean there's one has the resources necessary in order to take that back although to be fair josh does not have much going on in his hands like still like it it still could technically be anyone's game it just depends on what stefan has to really offer here yeah and i think stefan's down to boss um it's just gonna be tricky because as soon as like stefan only has one urshifu v left to potentially even get damage off on the Zamazenta. So at this point, you are really relying on your ability to to try to KO the Zacian V and the Luke Metal. That's your best out right now. Um, and I think that the Malolan in hand for Josh is important because no matter what, he can either Malolan of the Zacian um, or the Zamazenta, which is going to be really important in the long run, right? So I think that Stefan, you know, given the chance or given the 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 circumstances of that Urshifu V getting KO'd last turn, really puts him in a difficult position. Um, if that Marnie stuck. And last turn, and he was able to KO the Zamazenta, uh, you know, with Urshifu V, he would have been in a different position. And I do think that that was a very good line for him. I think that was probably one of the more solid plays he could have gone for. I just think that, you know, unfortunately, uh, it, it didn't work out. And, and in a matchup like this, you kind of have to, you know, you kind of have to be a little bit hopeful. <laughs> some You're going to have to jump. I totally agree with you there. Gremnot, what's going on, my man? How you doing? Uh, Alexander, how you guys doing? Thank you for tuning in live. About 140 people watching this live, so I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, at 3 o'clock in the morning or wherever it is in the world for anyone else who's watching, it's uh, fun times. <laughs> I think we're just going to see a couple Metal Energies discarded there, yeah. For sure. I think we're going to just Malolana, go into the Zamazenta, and... Uh, vibe, vibe out and just go, yeah. uh, but sword, let's see what we can get. I, mm, I guess building up an energy there seems okay. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you're kind of just vibing, right? I mean, you're, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know. We got, what, how many boss left in the deck for Josh? One, at least? I, I can't tell. I wish we had a spectator. Uh, yeah, 
it is unfortunate not having a spectator function. Or like we're watching off a Discord screen, and you can you can even tell that uh, Josh does not have the full uh, PTCGO screen uh, done, as you can see by you can see the application Pokemon Trading Card Game app at the top. Uh, so not even a normal uh, screen. Yeah, but, we're, um, we're literally just screen capping their their screen, screen. Capping on Discord. Like this is what you get sometimes for that. And I mean, hopefully uh, it grows as we see more of these Players Cup and uh, team challenges. Yeah, man, going on for sure. Uh, great stuff. I mean, PTCGO has been getting significantly better. I mean, we got the Denes on the ladder, but um, yeah, they're 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 trying. I think if if Pokemon were to do one thing that could really help out the community, I think that the spectate function uh, spectate. Uh, feature in PTCGO would perhaps be the most important thing. I think it would, it would be amazing for content creation. It would be amazing for coaching tendencies. There'd be so many things that I just love to dive into the game. I know. Uh, just answering a question from the chat regarding the game. So uh, KOWI, um, isn't it worth it to take use of the extra two energies on Luke Metal and attack even though it is bad attacks? I think at this point, like Josh only has three attackers for the rest of the game. And does not want to bench many Pokemon because he's trying to block with um, Zamazenta V's Dauntless Shield mm. ability. So it, it, it's more or less one of those things where he wants the energies on there to retreat, maybe tank a hit, things like that. Um, if he does get off an, a heavy impact, I mean, 150 for four energies is nothing special nowadays, especially when you have Eternatus V Max hitting 270 for two. Um, but in this case, there's a lot of just like. Right. You're just vibing out for the most part. And I think that, you know, Urshifu is really good in some ways, right? I mean, being able to hit for 150, uh, you know, for one energy on a very powerful, uh, very high HP VMAX Pokemon is very beneficial a lot of times in a lot of matchups. It's just in a matchup as such as this, uh, Malolana is a very bad card for Urshifu. It does not like the Malolana card at all. Um, and it's probably going to be pretty happy to see, uh, see that rotate uh, in September, but... Um, you know what? I mean, we're also just going to see Luke Metal also rotate. <laughs> True. Uh, which is, in my opinion, going to be very good. I don't know what Josh is going to do after rotation. Uh, he might just retire from the game entirely. Uh, but um, we see that Stefan here just goes into his fresh Urshifu VMAX. Does 100 damage to the Luke Metal. Uh, kind of putting some, at least some pressure on Josh, right? I mean, no healing options in hand. No Malolanas. He's forced to manually retreat out. Discard three energies. Um, and now just attack into this Urshifu. So what we could see, Zach, is a boss from Stefan, a KO on the three prize Luke Metal, and then potentially, um, I guess, try to go from there and take that one last KO. Seems unlikely. Definitely or not even, uh, battle. We can also see a G-Max Rapid Flow. Um, <gasps> I forgot. That, can take that Pokemon. So, I mean, I there's heard. no Bench Barrier Mew um, in this matchup. It's only Zamazenta, Zacians, Luke Metals. All Josh has. <laughs> True. I the mean, only deck that he has on PTCGO. That ra yeah, this VMAX Rapid and, Flow uh, here is going to be huge. I mean, I think that sets up now. Yeah. We'll so it, exactly how that sets up. So now, if he has Boss, he actually wins this matchup, and this is kind of where we see benching that second Zacian. Well, I mean, the damage the damage here doesn't really add up though for Boss. That's the issue. Oh, it's true. Yeah. So he's, yeah. You're doing 160 with uh with Gale Thrust, the first attack on Rapid Strike or Shifu. Gale Thrust minus 60 um, is going to be doing 100. So, I mean, that Zazacian V on the bench still gets two shots. So, I mean... Well, what we could I see think from... I Josh wins this game in yeah. two turns. Yeah, because um, so I think if the... If does not lose this game, Josh wins this game, if that makes sense. Like, is he, if he's able to protect yeah. that Zacian for the next couple turns, which I think he might be able to... Stefan wins this game with Boss... In a rapid. Josh does not find him out alone. Or another rapid strike, right? I mean, potentially we could see him uh, attach double energy to the bench Dershifu, switch in, rapid flow yet again, um, and then... That would only be 60 damage, though. 60, right, but then he has Gale Thrust to do 100 with boss, right? That like, does make sense. So maybe maybe it, it's possible. It's, it's like, certainly possible. Yeah, it's like his only other option other than double, double, like double boss, right? But... Um, if we see rapid rapid flow GX come out from hopefully that bench Dershifu, uh that would put uh Okay, so he scoops up the Mew too. Uh, so we'd have to see exactly how many uh bosses orders that Josh has left. That that's really more like we see the one in the hands. I know that Cash here is saying in the comments, uh Amarni, we have to see how many that Josh has in his discard pile. I think he's got one in his discard pile. So, 
it's tricky, but I think that Stefan has the capabilities to win, but I think that it's more likely that Josh, of course, you know, with the boss, takes three prize cards here and then just kind of, you know, that that Zacian potential with that the 200 and and 20 damage is really important or 230 damage is really really important right now because again you know you are one hit KOing both Urshifu B maxes as well as the Dedenne on the bench so I think uh it's unlikely okay so we do see the boss we got put on the top of the deck so if he has a switch card in hand he can retreat into Jirachi Stellar Wish scoop up um and and get damage off on that Zacian but it's gonna be tricky it's gonna be tricky and it's not the best scenario that you want to be in if you're Stefan, but I will definitely say he's been playing it very correctly, I think, throughout the game. Um, oh, yeah. I think Stefan's uh, definitely putting up uh, the best fight he possibly can. He's down to one prize card. I mean, this matchup is certainly closer than most people think. Yeah, I mean, I think a Phoebe in this in the surge food list, and, and things are completely different, right? And this matchup might be almost completely even, um, but uh, I, th I think it's, it's uh, you know... I don't know. I don't know, man. It, it's 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 fun to me. It's super late at night, but it's really fun for me to watch these two great players uh, play it out and, uh, and and really show what they what they've got here. So we actually see the research. So no way of actually getting into that boss, unfortunately. Discarding a lot of resources, Stefan goes into a three card hand, and unless we see it, our rapid strike energy, did he actually attach to Dorachi this turn? I think so. Yeah. So that's tough. So I think that that's the game. Maybe. Probably. What's going on, Jake R? Shout out to the uh, the channel members. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the channel members. I mean, Jake's been one of our channel members for a while now. Uh, you can see with the, I think it's a netball that we got going on there for the two months. I mean, certainly uh, appreciate all the support from everyone in the channel. So if you haven't got a chance already, um, support, support all the content creators that you possibly can. That you enjoy watching their content. Uh, not to sound all like sappy or anything, a lot of us uh, do not make a lot of money off of our content. Um, <laughs> some make some more than others, but I know both Maddie and I are uh, very small content creators now compared to some. Yep. Uh, so every little, every little bit of channel member income or donos or even donating to a prize pool can mean the world uh, to one of us, and that could be the difference between us treating ourselves to a uh, coffee from a. From a place, I mean, Maddie might be driving to his local Dunks. I might be driving to my local Tim Hortons or something. <laughs> or for something, sure. just a pat on the back for creating content. I mean, but even yeah. if you can't, just uh, giving the video a like. Um, yep. Whether you're watching this as the the live recording or Maddie's uh, finals recording that he's going to be putting up on his channel. Yep. And Zach, actually, <laughs> we saw the, 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 the Rapid Strike Energy attached to the Urshifu. So that was I was mistaken. He didn't attach that turn. Does do that sixty damage to the bent station. So if if Stefan has energy and boss, if his energy boss, which he has boss in hand actually, so all he needs is energy. He's got this game, Zach. Uh, the fact that that one's going up active tells me that it might be. No. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit tough, huh? Like, huh. I'm not entirely sure. Wait, why would he? He has the energy on the Jirachi. So he's going to retreat into Jirachi. So I guess he just has one switch card left in deck. So he's going to go in Stellar Wish and just guarantee to find it. Um, so, wow, yeah. Phenomenally played, Zach. Oh, we're going to just double check here. Well, he's doing enough. He's doing 100, right? Or no, he's doing 90. Energy? No, he's doing enough, yeah. He's got it. So we're moving into game three. Wow. Uh, so pulling out the game. And this is kind of um, where, again... Earlier in the game, where we saw saw Josh bench that sec, that second Zacian V, uh, which I know Zach, you said you, it was a little bit of a questionable decision. I agree with that, and, and it was the reason that uh, Stefan was able to win that game. So hopefully Josh, you know, kind of understands how that happened, and uh, you know, man, I can't even believe that to be honest with you. Not in a bad way. It's just Stefan played that so well. Um, yeah, Stefan, Stefan basically played his heart out in that game. Yeah, I mean, brought it to game three. I mean, this is, all of a sudden, this is a game, guys. This is a match. And uh, gold quick ball on the line. And uh, the winner of a 520-player tournament, I can't believe we're in game three. Absolutely uh, insane. And uh, I'm just so excited. And I, I just really can't believe it. Josh, I like, the, I like the Zamazet to start there. Yeah, this hand is very good. Um, and, and I think that uh, Josh is primed and ready. You know, I think Josh is a great player, so he's going to learn from his 
you know, I don't want to say mistakes, but sort of his I, decisions. I, I, I mean, I think it's one of those things where um, I'm very much a Gary V mentality, <laughs> where v. like I, I don't think that there should be a tenth place ribbon. I don't think that we should. It's good to congratulate yourself for making it this far. It's one thing to be like, hey, I was a little bit asleep. I think anything else beyond that was a downright misplay from Josh. Josh is one of my yeah. closest friends. No, I agree. Um, I think I, that Josh is like, why did I ever put down another Pokemon that's put it down? And I mean, maybe Josh would give me a lecture on why, uh, because he certainly knows Luke Metal probably better than I am. And it's one thing for us to be up here in the booth where you got players that are down in the mud fighting. Yeah, exactly. And it's late at night. This is your, you know, 40th game of the of the tournament. Um, exactly. But, uh, you know, I think there were definitely some benefits to benching uh, Zacian, right? I mean, you get the Intrepid Swords, you get the 230 damage potential. I just don't think it worked out in Josh's favor, and I think that it was a, it was more of a risky play. Uh, and I think that in this matchup, you don't necessarily need to make those risky plays. Exactly. And I think if you're Stefan, man, I think you just play almost identically to how you played last game. You know what I mean? I think that he played... I think that what he did, his strategy, sort of utilizing the Rapid Strike... Uh, the the VMAX, right? And, and Gale Thrusting, taking those early prize cards and then kind of working. Uh, and I think he knows what he needs to do here. I think that this uh, early game, Dene, is going to draw six cards. He does get the attachment on an Urshifu V this turn. Uh, probably looking to find a Jirachi so he can retreat into it. Um, but uh, pretty good starting hands for both players. 100%. I mean, I think as long as Josh just starts Sam Asenta and just vibes out, that's, that's really where it's all at. I think putting the Zacian down. One interesting play. I don't even know if it's worthwhile to put down. Um, yeah, even Luke Metal in this matchup for what it's worth. I kind of agree with that. Like I don't know. I, I if... just like Zamazenta, Zamazenta, Zacian, uh, or Zacian, Zacian, Zamazenta, Zamazenta. Right. I think that the one thirty from Zamazenta. Like I think you just go double Zam, and I think that you just kind of survive, right? I think you just mallow a lot on your Zams. I just don't think it's ever necessary. You're right. I don't think the math really ever works out. It's, uh, yeah. I, I mean, it, it certainly can't add up when it comes to sniping things and two-shotting things. So maybe, like, maybe it does matter. I don't, I think it's one of those things where you want to drop it in the same turn and surprise your opponent with the Metal Saucer and the Energy and the Luke Metal. Right. I think that's really the, of the essence, uh, yeah. is really how I like to play that card. I agree. I think maybe, like, a mid to late game sort of surprise Luke Metal setup GX could be huge, right? Um, but I think until then, I think because of sort of setting up your board state, um, is, is probably going to be smart. So we see both players maybe taking a different approach into this game, kind of learning from what you know they got from last game. Um, and uh, definitely excited to see, man. I never thought Luke Metal versus Rapid Trigger Shabu could be such a good, uh, entertaining matchup. But you know, both players are phenomenal, and, uh, and it's just. You know. I think it's really interesting. Like it's it's more interesting from Stefan's side because Josh just needs to kind of show up and perform, um, for the most part. And I think Stefan really needs to try to outplay Josh here. Uh, which is really the case of what happened game two. So we'll see. I mean, game three is obviously a new game, um, and I'm very excited to see what's going on here. Like, is it just going to be a Dauntless Shield block fest? Or are we going to see more Pokemon go down? Like, the Strafe... Strafe's a scary, scary move here. Like, I, I don't think Stefan wants to be using Strafe. I think Stefan wants to start being attacking into these Pokemon. Right. No, I, I agree. I, I think that it's... uh. It's definitely an interesting kind of move here and probably an unfortunate sort of hand at that at the moment uh, if you were uh, if you were Stefan. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see uh, how it goes. Uh, Zach, I'm going to do something real quick. Um, yep, I, no I, worries. I, I'm certainly here. I mean, I like hearing my own voice. That's why that's why I do content creation, right? <laughs> for, uh, sure, for sure. I'll let, let you go on. Feel free to cut me off when you come back in and we're all good. So I think uh, maybe Stefan here, I do see a Gale Thrust here for 150 damage because there's no full metal wall gx off this turn there's no metal saucer or uh, metal goggles it's uh 150 damage right to the zacian's face although josh did just top deck a malolana so i think the malolana going into whatever discarding whatever makes sense mm -hmm. sorry yeah josh, okay. is josh is discarding the zacian v because he's like okay cool i'm just not gonna play it down now i i think I would have liked to see maybe something else there, but I mean, going into Lily's Bogodol could certainly be fine. For sure. Sorry about that. I was back. I had to stop the recording and then restart it. So if you're watching the video back, uh, there was a little bit of a break here in the in the thing. I just had to split the recording so that, uh, you know, the, the video didn't go too long and fails, but we're back. We're back anyway. Thank you, Zach. No, 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 no worries at all. 
uh, uh, Swing Su. I don't know how to exactly pronounce that name. Are these the decks you expected to see in the finals? I don't think Rapid Strike Urshifu uh, was much of a surprise. And to be honest with you, Luke Metal's been so good recently. I don't. I'm not too surprised by that either. Uh, two phenomenal decks right now in the format. Um, and uh, you know, I don't think it's too much of a surprise to be 100 percent honest with you. No, I think I think anything like. The best way that I try to describe it, I do my metagame analysis every single Monday, where I break down the metagame. Um, I think Luke, Luke Metal was placed within the top five. Rapid Strike was placed within the top five. So seeing two top five decks right, exactly. in the finals completely makes sense. Like if we saw the Greens art in there, I think Danny <laughs> made a great metagame call. Yep. But that'd be a little bit more surprising. And we see a nice KO on this Urshu V with uh, the Zacian. Getting rid of those early game is going to be really important. Uh, taking some nice two prize cards. Um, you're also kind of in a situation, Zach, where at this point, you know, maybe, uh, how many, well, he's already down one boss, but I think that, um, I think with Cheryl being in the discard pile, I think now that you can maybe at some point KO this Jirachi if it gets stuck in the active and then just start focusing on the Urshifu, you know, and I think that that KO is really nice for Josh at this point in the game, but we are going to see this Urshifu come in, do some damage to the Zacian, but the tag call is in hand. Uh, for for Josh to of course just heal some damage off. Yeah, from the, I think Josh is in a much better position of power this game. Like it's one of those things where he's isolating the threats that he needs to isolate. He's like very similar to the Decidueye matchup. If you're taking care of the Pokemon that you're worried about going through Dauntless Shield, mm. that's something that you got to be careful about. So right. I don't think Josh was that careful last game. I think he's very much like looking at it and being like, oh cool, like that's the Rapid Striker shoot. Like I think he's finding his stride in this game. Yeah, and it's probably gonna kind of heat difficulty for Stefan. And one play, Zach, that I really like is the toughness cape on the Zacian V. I think that that's honestly smarter than putting it on the Zamazenta based off what we saw last game. Um, now the Zacian oh, I, I, mean, I think I'd still rather see a Metal Goggles, to be honest. Oh, that's... Yeah, I mean, you're probably correct, right? Because you're getting hit multiple times. Reducing yeah. more damage than what the 50 damage could ever be for the entire game. That is true. I mean, it works on the bench and stuff like that. Like, I mean, it's fine. I think... Josh was being opportunistic by playing it. Now, another thing that we should also note here is Stefan does not play dual scrapper. So anything that gets locked in, Josh can just put it down. Right. I think if I was Stefan, I might be wishing I played Rahul's rapid strike list from a week or two ago, which was a bit more well primed for this matchup. But um, we see the nice 150 on the Zacian goes up to 220. Now, if that cape wasn't there, though, <laughs> he'd be dead. But again, Goggles probably yeah, uh, overall a better choice. But you know what? Zach, uh, we are going to see a Malalani here. Heal 120 from this uh, Zacian V. And, um, well, probably, I, I would think. I, actually I, just... I, mean, I don't know if he... We can't see what's exactly in Josh's prize cards or what's in Josh's deck. But, I mean, I think... This is a very interesting play. Uh, go after and take away the Rapid Strike energy. So, not getting a knockout, but taking away the energy so that it can't really do too much. Yeah, I like that I play. I, I do. You know, the three-card hand in Stefan with for Stefan as well kind of makes it a little bit less likely for that Urshvu to be switched in and a boss on the Zacian. Um, so we see the energy attached. This might be just to manually retreat, but that could be a pretty aggressive play from Stefan. Uh, again, discarding more of those Rapid Strike energies, never something that you really love to see uh, or do. And we actually just see the Strafe come out. So for no damage, he's probably going to go back into the uh, Jirachi, which is probably pretty smart. Um, this is interesting. So, do you think that you ever at some point go into the Luke Metal for sort of the a single turn setup on it? I mean, it depends. Okay. I, I, I think it's one of those things where he I'd rather have the other Zam down. Yeah, okay. I agree with that. Does find I, it. It's like, yep, yeah, Stefan's going to knock out my Zacian. Uh, I got my six prize cards on board. I don't think he's knocking through my prize cards. And I, don't, I think Stefan's really just uh, going through the motions right now. Yeah, I think um, I think not in a great position. I think the three cards in his hand, kind of just feeling a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit unfortunate at the moment, perhaps just in his current situation. But you know what? Um, we saw him kind of get out of it, uh, out of a bad situation before. We see the Marnie come out, um, but I think that uh, Stefan definitely has a pretty good um, idea of what he should be doing. I think he just knows that uh, no matter what he does, it's not looking phenomenal. Yeah, it's looking a little bit rough here. We're going to see if there's another Cynthia Caitlin, maybe even like a Malolana. I mean, I think at this point, it doesn't really matter what Josh has in hands. Uh, the Zamazenta, the Metal Saucer, even being able to grab it at Guzma Hall to search out a special energy. Like, I think 
regardless of Stefan is attacking with Urshifu, it's only getting off one attack. I, and I think that's exactly exactly right. And um, I think that the two Zamazenta is smart because I think going through these two Zamazentas is going to be much more difficult uh, for <laughs> for Stefan than going through the Luke Metal uh, one Zamazenta and a Zacian. Uh, so I think that uh, Josh making the right decisions. Uh, to be honest with yeah, you, I think, I think Josh. I think Josh is going to be a Chill Series twenty eight champion, a multi Chill Series champion. That's right. I think Josh won Chill Series twenty four. I believe it was twenty four. I could be wrong. I mean, that's, that's pretty crazy to win two out of the last five that you played in. It really is. I might just double check right now just so I don't sound like an idiot because I probably should know who's won my tournaments. Um, so. Uh, I was wrong, I think. So Josh, well, Josh won Chill Series seventeen. So I don't know what I was thinking, but um, got it. That's fine. I mean, winning two out of the last ten it seems great. And I think Josh is going to go Cynthia Caitlin, discarding a uh, Lucario Melmetal here, and just getting back, um, getting back a boss's orders, forcing Stefan to find another boss as he tries to eye down that Rapid Strike Urshifu with a Salt Tackle. We could see a win here in about a couple minutes yeah and i think it's pretty likely uh josh probably feeling pretty good right now about uh his decisions of this game uh, feeling pretty good about his draws his overall situation and i think that stefan you know put up a fantastic right uh you know first two games yeah and there it yeah. is and we are watching josh so congratulations to josh for winning it yeah so we're gonna put um there it is yeah. let's uh, uh let's quickly jump back into the casters so we could just kind of uh sign everything off here for sure for for sure uh, i'm gonna end the recording video guys uh thank you so much uh, for watching i've been maddie from chill tzz don't forget to like the video don't forget to subscribe uh big congratula uh, congratulations to joshua sutherland stefan ivanov for playing a phenomenal chill series grand finals um you know thank you everyone who played uh, if you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to like subscribe uh, it means a whole lot to me and uh yeah we'll be back next week for chill series number 29 it's gonna be just as awesome as this past one um, and uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching. We're going to get out of here. Peace out.